Hi boys and girls, we're going to start a new book this week. It is The Magic Treehouse, Day of the Dragon King. It is part of a series of books with the same character. The author has written a prologue, which is a type of introduction to help us get information about the characters and the setting. So I am gonna read the prologue aloud. It comes at the beginning of the book. It'll help us connect this book to the other books in the series. So hopefully you have read other Magic Treehouse books by Mary Pope Osborne. And you'll know that the characters are Jack and Annie. This book does have a table of contents to list the different chapters. And then it goes right into the prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister, Annie, climbed into the treehouse. They found that it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the books. All they had to do was point to a picture and wish to go there. Along the way, they discovered that the treehouse belongs to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian from the time of King Arthur. She travels through time and space gathering books. In Magic Treehouse number 12, Polar Bears Past Bedtime, Jack and Annie solved the last of four ancient riddles and became master librarians. To help them in their future tasks, Morgan gave Jack and Annie secret library cards with the letters ML on them. Jack and Annie's first four missions as master librarians are to save stories from ancient libraries. When their first adventure ended, Magic Treehouse number 13, Vacation Under the Volcano, Morgan asked them to return to the treehouse in two weeks to go to China and save another story. Now, the two weeks are over. Day of the Dragon King. Chapter one, the bamboo book. Annie peeked into Jack's room. Ready to go to China, she asked. Jack took a deep breath. Sure, he answered. Bring your secret library card, Annie said. I have mine in my pocket. Yep, said Jack. He opened his top dresser drawer and took out a thin wooden card. The letters ML on it shimmered in the light. Jack dropped the card into his backpack. Then he threw in his notebook and a pencil. Let's go, said Annie. Jack pulled on his pack and followed her. What are we in for today, he wondered. Bye, Mom, said Annie as they passed their mom in the kitchen. Where are you going, she asked. China, said Annie. Great, said their mom. She winked at them. Have fun. Fun, thought Jack. He was afraid that fun wasn't quite the right word. Just wish us luck, he said, as he and Annie headed out the front door. Good luck, their mother called. If only she knew we aren't pretending, Jack whispered to Annie. Yeah, said Annie, grinning. Outside, the sun shone brightly, birds sang, crickets chirped, Jack and Annie walked up the street toward the Frog Creek woods. I wonder if the weather will be this nice in China, Annie said. I don't know. Remember, Morgan said this would be a very scary adventure, said Jack. They're always scary, said Annie, but we always meet animals who help us or people. True, said Jack. I bet we meet someone great today, said Annie. Jack smiled. He was starting to feel excited now instead of scared. Let's hurry, he said. They ran into the Frog Creek woods. They slipped between the tall trees until they came to a huge oak. Hello, came a soft voice they knew well. They looked up. Morgan was peering down from the magic tree house. Ready for your next mission as master librarians, she asked. Yes, said Jack and Annie. They grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Are we still going to China, asked Annie, when they had climbed into the treehouse. Indeed, said Morgan. 
You're going to ancient China. Here is the title of the story you must find. She held up a long, thin strip of wood. It looked like a ruler, except it had a strange writing on it instead of numbers. Long ago, the Chinese discovered how to make paper. It was one of the world's most important discoveries, said Morgan. But you are going to a time earlier than that, to a time when books were written on bamboo strips like this one. Wow, said Annie, pointing at the figures on the bamboo. So this is Chinese writing? Yes, said Morgan, just as we have letters, Chinese writing is made up of many characters. Each one stands for a different thing or idea. So let me stop there for just a second. Now we know something about the characters. Let's see what uh, we can, you know, figure out about Jack and Annie's characters. Um, and I'm going to stop here because I can make a connection about these Chinese characters. So I'm not talking about people, but instead the shapes of their letters. We learned that hieroglyphics are used in ancient Egypt with pictures standing for words. And we learned that Egyptians wrote on papyrus. Now we see that ancient Chinese writing also used characters as they wrote on bamboo strips. So ancient cultures had their own ways of writing, but they were similar. Right, back to the story. These characters are the title of an ancient Chinese legend. You must find the first writing of the legend before the Imperial Library is destroyed. Hurry, let's go, said Annie. Wait, we need our research book, said Jack. Yes, you do, said Morgan. From the folds of her robe, she pulled out a book. On the cover was the title, The Time of the First Emperor. Morgan handed the book to Jack. This research book will guide you, she said, but remember, in your darkest hour, only the old legend can save you. But we have to find it first, said Annie. Exactly, said Morgan. She handed Jack the bamboo strip and he slipped it into his pack. Jack pushed his glasses into place, then pointed at the cover of their research book. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still.